Now we're going to look at graphing exponential functions and analyze some of the properties of exponential functions. Remember, an exponential function is a function that will have this form, y equals a to the power of x, where a, this number a, is some, some number that's greater than zero. Okay, so let's consider the example y equals, let's pick a number, let's say 2. And we'll graph this simple, basic exponential graph, y equals 2 to the power of x. So on the left side here, I've got a table of values. Let's uh, see what happens when we have an x value of negative 2. Well, when we, were, when we have an x value of negative 2, so y equals 2 to the power of negative 2, replace the x with minus 2. Remember what a negative exponent does? The negative exponent means take the reciprocal of the base. So what this would actually be is 1 half, because 2 is the same as 2 over 1, and if you take the reciprocal of that, you get 1 half. So it would be 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth. So I have a, a y value of 1 fourth when I have an x value of 2. Let's put in negative 1. 2 to the power of negative 1. Again, we're going to take the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 2 is 1 half. And 1 half to the power of 1 is still 1 half. Substituting in 0 for x. 2 to the power of 0. Well, any number to the power of 0 is 1. That's a definition. These are, these are exponent rules that you would have learned uh, in previous math courses. So any number, when you raise it to the power of 0, will always equal 1. And then if x equals 1, 2 to the power of 1 is 2, and when x equals 2, 2 to the power of 2 is 4. We could carry on, we could do a x value of 3, 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So let's plot these points and see, see what our graph will look like. So when x is minus 2, we said y was a quarter, so that would be somewhere right around here. When x was negative 1, our y value was up to 1 half. Get a point here. When x is 0, y was 1. When x was 1, y was 2. When x is 2, y was 4. And when x is 3, y is 8, which is, I think, off my scale. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it would be way up here somewhere. 8. And when we connect the dots, we get a smooth curve looking like this. So exponential graph, y equals 2 to the x, we have a smooth curve looking like this. Well, what if we change the base to a number like 3? Well, if we did a number like 3, let's use our same x values here. And let's do another set of y values for our red graph. So putting in an x value of negative 2, negative reciprocal of the base, so 1 over 3. And we would now square that, so we would get a y value of 1 ninth. Substituting in negative 1, negative means reciprocal of base, so we're at 1 third. To the power of 1 is still 1 third. Any number to the power of 0 is 1. 3 to the power of 1 was 3. 3 to the power of 2 is 9. And 3 to the power of 3 is 27. So, plotting these points on our graph, negative 2 is negative 1 ninth, so that's pretty tiny. Negative 1 is negative, or is a, is a third. Next, so when x is 0, y is 1, goes to the same point. When x is 1, y is now 3. And when x is 2, y is 9, which would be way, way up. So it still has the same basic shape. Same basic shape here. Um, comes along the x-axis goes to the point 0, 1, and then continues on, on up. And obviously the larger this number base is going to be, the steeper your curve is going to get. 
And the smaller this number, the, the uh, less steep your curve will, will be as we, as we move to the right along the x-axis. Let's look at one more graph. Let's look at the, the graph y equals one half to the power of x. So I've left our original graph on there, y equals two to the x, the one in blue. Um, now let's look at what happens if the base is less than one, say a fraction like a half. Let's do the same x values okay, that we got here, and we'll do a red y value table here. <clears throat> so putting in, substituting in negative two for x. Negative means reciprocal to base, so the reciprocal of that is up to two now and 2 to the power of 2 would be 4. Substituting the next value of negative 1, negative, we just got a reciprocal of the base, now we're at 2, 2 to the power of 1, 2. 1 half to the power of 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1. 1 half to the power of 1 is 1 half. 1 half squared is 1 fourth. And 1 half cubed is 1 eighth. So let us substitute, or let us plot these points rather, and see what our graph looks like. So when x is negative 2, y value is 4. Point. x is negative 1, y value is 2. x is 0, y is 1. x is 1, y is a half. x is 2, y is a quarter. x is 3, y is an eighth. And so you can see that if the base is something less than 1, such as the fraction 1 half, that the graph is similar, except it decreases as we move to the right. And that's because as we continue to multiply 1 half by increasing powers of x, our numbers get smaller and smaller and smaller. You might notice that the graph of y equals 2 to the x and the graph of y equals 1 half the power of x are the exact same function except their reflections in the y-axis. So let's summarize the properties of our exponential functions. So looking at the properties of the exponential function y equals a to the x, if a, the base, is a number greater than 1, so for example y equals 2 to the power of x, then the graph will curve up to the right. You could always generate the graph by making a table of values and substituting those points onto your graph. If your base, the base A, is a number between 0 and 1, that is a decimal or a fraction between 0 and 1, so for example y equals 0 0.5 or 1 half to the power of x, then the graph curves down as we move towards the right. So regardless of whether our graph curves up to the right or down towards the right, the domain of the exponential function y equals a to the x will be all real numbers, goes to the left forever and to the right forever. The range is y greater than 0, only positive y values are permitted. The x-intercept does not exist because it never touches the x-axis. The y-intercept will always be 1, this means that all exponential graphs have a y-intercept of 1 and the asymptote is the x-axis, or the line y equals 0.